Nothing says happy holidays like a brand new picture of Uranus. And this one is absolutely gorgeous. The ice giant Uranus is shown with its moons and rings, hanging against a backdrop of black space and smudges of background galaxies. JWST has captured the planet in incredible detail and resolution, so much so that we can even see storms and other atmospheric features on a planet that is 2.9 billion kilometers away from the sun. We have seen Uranus from JWST before, this image was taken in February 2023 and released in April 2023. It's also beautiful, but it only used two wavelengths of light, meaning it's just a two color image. This new one doubles the number of wavelengths used to four, so we end up with a much more colorful and more detailed view of the planet. If you do want all of the details on the previous image, check out the video I made when that image was released. In this video though, we'll just focus on the new image and the brand new features that we can see here. There are two versions of this new image, one close up and one zoomed out to show the planet nestled in the full spacey landscape. Normally, at this stage of looking at a web image, I point out that the bright objects with the spikes coming out of them are bright stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Here, this is also true for this one star, although it is more distant than Uranus's, so it feels odd that I want to call it a foreground star. However, these bluer ones here with the diffraction spikes though, they aren't stars. These are some of the bigger moons of Uranus. The planet actually has 27 moons, ranging greatly in size, and all named after either Shakespeare characters or names that appear in an Alexander Pope poem. In this new picture, we can see 14 out of the 27 moons, named as you can hopefully see here. They range from the massive Oberon in Titania, all the way down to some tiny moons nestled within Uranus's rings. The moons that we can't see are all incredibly small, so we don't need to worry about missing out on anything too exciting here. Another small detail that I absolutely love is that Uranus is actually bright enough to have six massive diffraction spikes too. The spikes around the moons and stars are smaller because they come from smaller, even point-like objects from JWST's point of view. But Uranus is big and it's extended and that gives these thick spikes coming off of the whole planet. JWST's incredible sensitivity also refuses to leave the background blank, but captures so much infrared light that we can see many, many galaxies in the distant background. There are a couple of obvious and beautiful specimens like this one here, and many more smaller hidden gems. Please do let me know if you can find something in the background that you think is especially cool in the comments down below. I'll leave a link to the high resolution images in the description so you can go hunting yourselves. Zooming in a bit, we can see some amazing things on and around the planet itself, and we get to enjoy the richness of color that these extra wavelengths of light give us. JWST's near-infrared camera NERCAM has even captured the faint and diffuse Zeta ring, the innermost and least bright of Uranus's rings. As far as we know, the planet has 13 rings, and I think we can see 11 of them here, but do let me know how many you can count to. Invisible wavelength images, like those from Hubble or ground-based telescopes here on Earth, Uranus looks like a calm, solid blue ball. However, the detail from JWST's infrared detectors shows a world that is dynamic and icy, filled with exciting and probably violent atmospheric features. We can spot several bright storms all around the planet, appearing as the white smudges. And the most striking bright feature is the planet's north polar cap, Comparing this to the older JWST image, we can definitely see more detail here in the polar cap, including a dark lane towards the bottom of the cap, and even a brighter white inner cap. All of these details, especially the inner Zeta ring, will be incredibly valuable to know about when it comes to planning future missions to Uranus, which I'm certainly hoping to see come to light at some point in the next mm, few decades. Uranus orbits the sun basically on its side. It rolls around the solar system with an axial tilt of 98 degrees, and this leads it to have some of the most extreme seasons in the solar system. Winters last for 21 Earth years on the distant side, with the pole facing the sun receiving 21 years of unblocked sunlight, causing the cap to become more and more prominent during these times. Finally, let's just take a moment to appreciate how hard it is for JWST to image our solar system planets, and what an amazing image we've been given despite all of it. One day on Uranus is just 17 hours long, 
And since it's such a large planet, that means it's rotating really fast. Moons and storms are visibly moving in a matter of minutes, so sensitive telescopes like JWST that are trying to image these rapidly moving features can really struggle to capture the entire planet in one go. To combat this, our new image combines some long and short exposure times to correct for the slight changes during the observations, and the result is just stunning. In fact, Uranus can even be used as a proxy for studying distant exoplanets, many of which seem to be similar in size, mass, and composition to Uranus and Neptune. This means we can use Uranus to start to understand exoplanet weather and even how they formed, helping us to not only understand our solar system, but also how it fits into and compares to our picture of the wider universe. Feel free to leave me any questions or comments down below, or even crack a joke about Uranus if you need to. And thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe, team. I'll see you soon. Bye!